All right, folks, so on the always messy workbench, I've got two boxes here that relate to a project that, by the time you see this video, I don't know if you'll have seen the video about the project, but it is called the Petting Zoo, and um, it's about a lot of 172 scale, what we call threat aircraft. Um, and I don't think you, I don't think you will have seen that video yet by the time we, we get this one up because I still have some other projects that I need to finish up before I get to that. Um, I have recorded some, um, some kit unboxings and kit reviews for that, but I haven't, I haven't gotten a chance to work on anything for it. But, um, the point is we can expect to see a whole lot of 172 scale, um, threat aircraft coming soon, shortly, at some point in the future, this year. Um, and it is all based on uh, my work, my life, as an Air Force weapons and tactics specialist guy. Um, and I will explain more of that later. But in order to do that, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in need of armament. And there are two sets out there right now. I mean, one that you can get your hands on relatively easily. One that is, you're not going to find very easily. You used to be able to. A few years ago, I had a bunch of these sets that I used for the, in the Air Force, building, building these models for display at work in the squadron. That will be explained during, you know, other videos. Um, it's kind of hard to find this one right now. Um, now, DML makes some Soviet weapon sets. They don't make the newest weapons, though. They're rather old sets, and they come in air-to-ground, uh, just like Hasegawa has, like, air-to-air uh, -air missiles, air-to-ground, you know, bombs, and then air-to-ground missiles. The DML sets have missiles, bombs, and some older air-to-air -air weapons, but they're quite frankly not as good, and they are they don't include some of the newer weapons I want to use. So we we'll probably will use some of those older DML sets, um, but... We're going to unbox, we're going to look at, review both of these sets side by side since they include uh, some of the primary weapons I'm looking for, which is uh, in, in Russian speak, the R-77 or the AA-12 Amramsky. It's actually the AA-12 Adder, but we call it the Amramsky. Uh, the R-27, please let me be getting this right. The AA-10 Alamo. I know my AA codes are right. It's it's the I know all my NATO codes are right. It's the Russian ones that I'm that I'm I'm always a little bit off on. Um, and the R-73, the AA-11 Archer. Um, those are some of the primary weapons that we're going to be seeing on a lot of these of these aircraft that we're going to be building. And both these sets have them. Now I know that Hasegawa does them pretty well. ICM to me has been an okay maker. But I haven't built one of their modern kits, and I will be... I mean, I built their P-51s. They're pretty good. Their P-51s are basically copies or, or, or built off of old Tamiya molds, so they're not bad. Uh, I'm not so sure about their newer their newer aircraft, so we will be building some MiG-29s from them later on, so we'll see. But we're going to unbox these side by side. We're going to take a look at what you have and how many, because one, one of the things I'm discovering, too, is that we're just not enough. There are never enough... Um, AA-12s, R-77s to go around, and some of the newer, best uh, Russian aircraft, they can be loaded up with those things, and, and they would be loaded up with those things, because that's kind of the best missile they have. China has better missiles. China makes the PL-12, the PL-15, great missiles, and when we when we build things like the the um, J-11 Bravo, or... or um, you know, even other other aircraft, the J-16, things like that, will be using those weapons. But for for Russia, former Soviet stuff, the you know the ones that are capable, that's one of the best missiles they have. Uh, and I don't want to get into it now, but so we're gonna unbox both of these side by side and take a look at the pros and cons of each each set and what they have to offer. Um, so what do they have to offer? Number one. Hasegawa has Hasegawa quality. You know that Hasegawa is a good maker. You know their stuff is usually very accurate, usually, um, and that you're getting stuff that is going to be modern, modern, okay? Uh, well engraved panel lines, flash-free ejector pins where you're not going to see them, um, and things like that. ICM, again, I'm not... I'm seeing kind of modern ICM for the first time. 
Do not scold him. We'll replace it. Well, this makes me feel good about ICM right there. My dog has never destroyed any model-related stuff, but things have gotten missing and lost and whatever, so that's cool to see. So in each one, we've got, let's see, what do we have here? We have four sprues in the Hasegawa box. Um, and this one was bought secondhand, but it's complete. This one was bought brand new, and it is still sealed. We only have two sprues in the ICM box. And, but, what do we have? Oh, look at that. This makes me happy. We have one, two, three, which gives us a total of six Amramskis. Awesome. Love it. That's cool. Um, so I know that in this box, we only get two or four uh, AA-12s, which, yeah, we only get two, sadly. And I need, I need more of them. Now, instructions, well, we get the whole Hasegawa booklet. Here we just get kind of a folded piece of paper. Um, we get a much easier to see parts map than on here. And then we get the explanation of what everything is. And you basically get the same thing here. You get your parts map and then um, you get a little bit about the weapon, which is which is cool on the Hasegawa one. Um, this also has uh, some limited some limited air to ground stuff too. Um, notably the KH31, what we call the AS17 Krypton. Um, now there are uh, different versions of the KH31. Um, wow, I'm speaking Russian instead of NATO. The AS17 uh, is. It's moderately effective. It's 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 a missile that we are afraid of um, on our, our ground-based radar systems and ground-based, surface-based, you know, shipboard systems too. Um, there's a lot we can do to counter it, but it if you're not if you're not up on your electronic protection and countermeasures, the the AS-17 is no joke. So this is going to play into a lot of the aircraft, and then we've got some KB-1500. This is a laser-guided bomb. Um, we might use that, yeah. And then, of course, air-to-ground rocket pods, because the Russians still to this day, with as much as their technology has advanced, they love the unguided rocket pods to fire just huge salvos. And why not? Because it is effective. It's just like a swarm of bees coming at you. Um, and then we've got the little map of where they can fit on a Su-35. But they don't give you anything else, which is, I guess that's kind of, you know... These missiles can be carried by other aircraft. The ICM kit gives you none of the above. Just just tells you how to how to build them. And I mean, I guess if you know what you're doing, that's great. That's good. Good luck. God bless. There you go. Um, one thing that I see here that Hasegawa gives you that ICM does not at all is markings for your missiles. Now they don't give you much. Um, these stripes. And, and these little checker things, these are not for live action missiles. So I've said this before on the channel, when you see Russian missiles with those stripes, that's their way of telling you those are inner, like uh, training rounds. Um, in the US, we use different colored bands around the missiles. If you see a blue bomb, or you see a, a blue rocket uh, missile body, or you see a blue band around a regular colored bomber missile, that's a, that's a dummy warhead, it has no warhead in it. Um, for the Russians, they use these three bands to tell you that that's a, a dummy missile. So, um, and there's also a lot more, and this is for uh, like testing. This is not this is not a live shot marking. So the markings don't really help you out that much with live loaded weapons, um, but you have them. There's no such there's no markings whatsoever in the ICM the ICM set at all. Um, you know, and the thing is. Russians don't do a whole, I mean, if you really want to scrutinize, there are little markings on the weapons, but for the project we're doing, we don't need to be super hyper accurate with all these weapons anyway. And in 148, the, all the markings would be much more pronounced. Um, I do know that Trumpeter gives you, and some of the you know um, newer companies give you great decals for stuff that you can hardly see on your 172 scale mar um, missiles and bombs and stuff, but that's just fine. Well, you know, whether they want to, you know, I don't care about the, the markings that much. It's just contrasting what you're getting between the two. Um, so let's take a look at the actual pieces in the box. So 
starting with the Hasegawa. Um, so we get we get four Kryptons. Interesting, but only but only two adders. Why is that? Why is that? I don't know. Um, we get four of these bombs, laser guided bombs. Um, these are launch rails for the Kryptons right there. And then look, we even get two pilots. They give us two pilots. Um, and this actually, if you look at it, it even says it comes from the 172 skill Su-35 kit, which now convenient. They can just take the weapons right out of it. And these come from the Su-33 kit, which is weird because the Su-33 doesn't, well, the most upgraded versions of the Su-33 can fire the A-12, but normally they can't. Um, so that's just another interesting thing to note. So we'll just know that we get double of everything in here. So we've got, and over here, I didn't even notice this. So we've got an A8 AFID, which is just a, it's a very, very short range um, air to air missile, fills the, the range gap between the maximum range of a gun and the minimum range of a, of a, of a radar guided missile. Does it, it's not a very, not a very combat using an effective missile, but they do carry it. We've got, um, the racks and launch rails for all of the assorted missiles. We've got two archers here. Archer is a fairly effective um, heater, heat-seeking missile. Uh, not as good as the AIM-9X, but it was better than the AIM-9M before we had the AIM-9X. So um, nothing is as good as a Python 5. The Python, oh, man, the Israelis are good. Um, so what you see here is is also interesting to me. So the AA-10, and I know I've repeated this in other videos, but you know, you might not have seen them, so that's okay. The AA-10 comes in actually six different variants, um, A through F. You never see the Echo or the Fox ever used. So we're not even gonna talk about them. They exist, they're never carried. Really, you've got the uh, Alpha and Bravo, which are the shorter ones, what we call the short burn ones. Alpha has a pointy nose, because it's a radar guided version. And Bravo has more of a rounded nose. It would look something like this because it's an infrared guided missile. So medium range um, radar guided or infrared guided missile. Now these longer ones, and you can see that it's got like a longer body and it's got a little bump there. This is good detailing for the missile. Is what we call in the US, we call, you'd think in Charlie and Delta, but oh no, we got to be special about it. We call chucks and ducks. Why Chucks and Ducks? Probably just because it rhymes. It called them Chucks and Ducks long before I ever got in the Air Force, and we'll call them Chucks and Ducks long after, I'm sure. But you've got Alpha Bravo's Chucks and Ducks. Chucks and Ducks are what we call long burn threats because they're longer range. Um, and we we treat them like a longer range. You know, they're, they're more dangerous to us. But the Chuck is also pointy-nosed because it's radar, and Duck is this, uh, you know, has a lens in it. It's this more rounded nose because it's a heat-seeking missile. And the sheer concept of a heat-seeking medium-range missile is pretty cool. And the way it works is pretty cool, but I can't really discuss it on YouTube. But if they get a lock on you, you're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> and I'm just gonna leave that there. Um, what you could do, if you really wanted to, to make a, a chuck, um, because that is the missile that, you know, Su-27s um, and Su-35, that like they 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 do carry. A, so the way they do it, sorry, I'm getting off on tangents. They usually carry more. A Su-27 doesn't carry these short burns. They don't because they don't need because they can use the long burns. MiG-29s, um, except for like the SMT and upgraded versions of the 9-13, they use the short burn ones, and it's just because it integrates with their radar. Su-27s and those those better ones. They they better ones. Sorry, I think it's better jet. Uh, but those with the better radars, they use the long burn missiles because they integrate with it. Um, they don't typically carry the short burns ones. So what would be so you could cut off the the nose there and do some surgery and make it a chuck a long burn, or you could leave it a duck. But the thing is, Su twenty sevens and and you know all those the flanker um, family typically will carry at a maximum only two of the D models because. Let's face it, it's it's not as reliable at a longer range as a radar guided missile is. So, sorry, end of rant, end of rant. But, so for them to, I'm just saying for them to include the long burn bodies, but only give you the, the infrared heads, it's problematic. And you get four of each. So, just saying, I'm just saying. Um, 
Now you get your two AA12 Amramskis. Um, the difference between these and that, these are semi-active, which means the, the mothership has to keep the target locked on radar the entire time um, until these guys can guide themselves all the way to the target and blow it up. The Amramsky has a high PRF radar seeker in the nose. Um, the Amram has a high PRF and a medium PRF dual band seeker. So it's a, it's a not dual band, but dual mode. So it's a, it's a better missile. Um, but this can shoot for a little bit, um, get mid course correction from the, the launch aircraft, and then at a point can turn on its own seeker so that the launch aircraft can stop flying straight towards that bad guy and go away, which is nice. That's what we call fire and forget. This is fire and forget, these are not. But that's also why we call it the Amramski, because um, they didn't have a capability like that, with the, like we had the Amram until they had the A-12. So there's a little lesson there. You've got a uh, twin rack for your rocket pods, by the way. But the detail is pretty good. You've got lots of fine detail that you don't want to get covered up with too many coats of paint and gloss and weathering and all that, and lots of uh, engraved detail on the missiles. That is fairly accurate, you know. If you guys ever find yourself at Nellis Air Force Base, you can uh, get into the Intel Squadron and get your hands on the real things. Details are not bad. Um, so we've got that. Um, so that's the Hasegawa box. Now, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing that, so we got two of the identical sprues. What these guys give you that Hasegawa doesn't is two sets of Sorbetia jamming pods that can go on to the wingtips of a flanker, which is pretty cool. Um, now they might not just be Sorbetia, they might, they might be other versions too. Um, but Su-34s, uh, the whole flanker family um, can give up those wingtip rails and carry these jamming pods, which some kits come with. Sometimes you got to make them yourself. And these guys give you a jamming pods, which is nice. And the jamming pods can do some stuff that we don't like. So yeah. Now I'm just noticing, just looking at it, the detail is a little bit softer and a little bit more pronounced um, compared to the Hasegawa. But you know, you might you might like that. It's a little bit it's a little bit more there. I mean, you know, you can see it and be like, ah, uh, but it doesn't have as much detail, but definitely deeper in there. They do a better, as far as I'm concerned, I guess everybody wants to make weapons for flankers. Uh, um, well, I guess they really just wanted to make a loadout for a flanker because all we have here are long burn weapons. And you can tell the long burn weapons because they have the little, that size change right there in the missile. But look what we have. Chuck, 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 duck. So this would be an appropriate loadout like the between the two sprues um, to throw on your flanker. And we've got, like I said, six uh, adders. And we only have um, we only have two archers, but the archers are actually pretty well detailed, I think. Oh no, we've got no, we've got four archers. So we've got two on each. Okay, cool. Um, no air to ground weapons at all though, because this is an air to air weapons box. But if you're building a flanker, um, this is, this is not, this is a pretty good, I mean, air to air loadout. This is a pretty good box to go with. Um, you've got, now there are more weapons on here than, you know, a standard flanker is going to carry all at once. So you can, you'll have some spares. Um, it's not going to carry six AA-12s and, uh, eight AA-10s and four AA-11s, that's, that's too much. There's only 10 hard points. Um, and if you're gonna put the jamming pods on the wingtips, which would be smart to do, but you don't have to do it. Um, and I don't know, you know, so these are actually, these are obviously drilled for a specific kit. I don't know if ICM puts out a flanker kit, honestly, and that's what they're, they're drilled for the wingtips of that kit, or if they're made for something else, um, but I would I would suspect that these are that these are sized for a specific kit because they have pins to go in holes. I gotta look that up. I gotta look that up. And if ICM makes a flanker kit, I want to pick it up and check it out. Um, but these are pretty decent weapons for the scale. Um, you know enough detail 
that you'll see it and totally recognize it for what it is and 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 you know not a lot of de like they don't give you a whole lot of excessive detail that's really shallow and might get lost in all layers of weathering and, and painting the aircraft that i'm going to do for this project are not going to be heavily weathered they're, they're going to be you'll you'll hear the whole thing when we do it so i like this this box is great for the purposes of what i'm doing which is to show threat aircraft with potential armament that we might see them carry this box is good too and i'm happy i got it because it does give me i am going to have some some versions loaded air to air and some loaded air to ground and this gives me those options um and i've got a couple extra pilots to play with now in case it i even and you know what like i've got some pedo tubes for the spares i'll end up with different you know for when i'm doing what ifs or scratch building or whatever i've got different pylons and all that for for different projects but they're they're both pretty good pros and cons you know depending on what you're working with and what you're looking for um you'll see that the size of the weapons though they're they're both pretty much in scale with each other um if we take a look at these two aa11s i mean they got the scale close fins are a bit different sized i say that the fin shapes are a little bit more accurate uh, well, the forward fin shapes are a little bit more accurate here, but the rear fin shapes are a little bit more accurate here. Um, you know, a little bit more accurate detail on the Alamos here, but easier to see detail here. The AA-12s are, oops, are just about the same either way. Um, you know, I this kit was a lot cheaper the icm kit was a lot cheaper than the hasagawa kit but then again when you're dealing with the hasagawa kit you know i had to hunt one down this is this was a limited run and they are a little bit hard to find now um this was a limited edition that hasagawa put out once upon a time i think that either way whichever one you get your hands on will will give you a a good ability to load out obviously a flanker there are some weapons that will work pretty well for other aircraft like i said um you know a mig-29 smt can carry the longer range aa-10s um, but it's not uncommon to see them just carrying the alpha bravo models um, older mig-29s uh, the 9-12 9-13s they carry the short burn all the time and the archers they will even carry the aa-8s sometimes depending on who's flying them very rare to see a flanker carrying the aphid very very rare um, you usually will will see them only carrying i mean the the 11 um if countries can afford the the upgrade to the systems the original flanker obviously did not carry the the um did i just call it the 11 i meant the 12 because it didn't exist yet um, but countries that got their flankers upgraded or bought flankers since that will carry them uh, otherwise, you're looking at a, a mix of, of 11s and 10s. Uh, the Romanian MiG-21 Lancer could carry some upgraded weapons. The MiG-21 Bison, uh, India turned the MiG-21 into a badass, almost fourth generation fighter. Um, still old airframe, but they really tricked it out to carry some modern weapons. So either of these boxes will be pretty good, um, depending on what you're, what you're looking for. This is much easier to find and much more affordable than this guy. And then again, we still have those old DML sets that are out there if you're not needing the most current modern weapon sets. So I got to get to work finishing uh, some some commission stuff so I can get to this petting zoo project. Oh, and uh, some models for a friend too. But the petting zoo project will be pretty cool. And you'll see videos about the petting zoo project and what it means and what it is really soon. And I hope you guys will enjoy seeing the progress on it and then seeing them all finished when they're all done. There's going to be a lot of models involved in this. So... Thanks for watching this one. I hope that uh, this has been useful or maybe some people have just learned a few things and seen something interesting. For all you guys and gals and everyone building your stuff out there on YouTube land, keep building them, build them well, and I'll be back with some more videos really soon.